Hello everybody and welcome back to Chef Sherry's Plant-Based Kitchen. I've been away for a couple of weeks again. I know I've been traveling a lot this summer so I haven't had a chance to make a lot of videos but I had something so incredible yesterday at our Vegan Volunteer Corps annual potluck picnic that I had to come home and make it today and share it with you. This is something that I would serve for Thanksgiving coming up. It's a main dish and it was delicious. It was um, provided by a woman whose name is Diane's Vegan Kitchen. I'll send you the link or I'll send you the recipe and give her credit for this recipe. So how many of you remember having chicken piccata as a kid if you weren't e eating plant-based? I did. We used to have it like at restaurants. And, oh my gosh, I just love the sauce. And this is a seitan chickpea piccata which is just as delicious, and in my opinion, even more delicious than having it with chicken. So I went ahead and prepared the cutlets so you can see what they look like. They're right down here. They've been baked a little bit. See how brown they are? I mean, they rarely look like chicken cutlets, don't they? But it's seitan and chickpea. I'm gonna to explain to you how to make this because it would have taken too long for me to do it with you on camera. So there's a couple of steps, and it does take a little time, but it's well worth it. And I would say double this recipe if I were you, because it's gonna go fast in your house. So the first thing we did was we took one can of chickpeas, and I drained and rinsed them, and I threw them in my food processor, along with two tablespoons. I used Bragg Liquids Aminos. You can use a low sodium tamari if you'd like. I also put in 3 fourth cups of uh, vital wheat gluten, that's what makes the seitan, along with two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Uh, then I added onion powder and garlic powder, paprika and a little salt. And again, you'll see all of the amounts that you have to put in on the description part of the YouTube channel. So I put that all into the food processor until it became well combined. Then all I did was I took out a cutting board and I threw the dough, it's like a dough, throw it on the table and just knead it for about three minutes, just like you would bread. Fold it, knead it, you wanna get it nice and kneaded. And then I cut it into eight sort of equal pieces and I simply shaped them into these shapes, about a quarter of an inch thick and I, that was that. Now, then you have to make what they call a batter breading mixture. This is the second step. Once you've got this done, and you steam these guys, I forgot to mention. So you're gonna put them in a steamer after you've made them into the shapes and steam them for 25 minutes. Then when you take them out, you add this batter, which is simple. It's one cup of chickpea flour and a half cup of water. You mix it together, and then you, and you put a little salt and pepper in there if you'd like, and then some panko breadcrumbs in another bowl. And then you take these pieces of uh, our seitan and chickpea little pieces, and you're going to dip them into the batter, and then take them out of the batter and coat them with the breadcrumbs. That's it. Put them on a baking sheet. I bake them at 350 for about a half hour until they browned up. Then, the best part is this wonderful mushroom piccata sauce. And I'm telling you, all of this is really easy. It just takes a little time, but it's well worth the effort. So to make this piccata, mushroom piccata sauce, all I did was I took one eight ounce package of mushrooms. I used the brown mushrooms, the portobello little mushrooms, and a little bit of salt and pepper, and a tablespoon of almond butter. If you don't have almond butter, you can substitute peanut butter. And you combine that with vegetable broth. Um, first of all, well, the first thing I did was I just cooked the mushrooms in a little water until they were soft. Then I took them out and put them in a separate bowl. Then I added my vegetable broth and I added the almond butter and I mixed it in the pan. And once it was combined, then I added in the rest of the ingredients, which were simple. It was dry white wine, fresh lemon juice, capers, and some fresh parsley. You mix it all together until it thickens, and there you go. So here's what we're gonna do. So all you have to do when you serve it, since this is really cooked, is just reheat all of this. So I'm gonna take my cutlets, and I'm gonna put them into this baking pan, like this, and then all you do is take your mushroom sauce, and we're gonna just pour it on top. And I doubled the recipe of the sauce because I love I love the way it tastes and I like to coat this really well so it'll taste really delicious. Excuse me, my sack there. Put the rest of that on. 
I mean, that's pretty simple. Look how pretty it is. And I think we've got enough sauce there. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to probably cover this. I'll put some foil on it or something to cover it. And when you're ready to eat it, stick it in the oven until it warms up. You don't want it to get it real hot, maybe 350 for about 10, 15 minutes. And there it is, your own seitan chickpea piccata. Wonderful recipe. Thank you so much to Diane who created the recipe and watch for it. Um, I'll be back hopefully, sir. I'm not traveling anymore. We just got back from Asheville with our family, which was really a really vegan friendly town. Wouldn't you say, Dale? Absolutely. We had no problem finding good places to eat. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend one restaurant called Plant there. If you're ever in the Asheville area, check it out. It's very good. So until then, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time back in my kitchen. So long. Bye-bye.